Hello guys and welcome to episode number three of my F1 2021 My Team Career Mode with Porsche Tech Hewer. Today's episode is going to be at Azerbaijan. We should have been doing the Monaco Grand Prix, but the audio got really mixed up with the way that I was recording it because I was trying to do it live on Twitch as I'm going to be doing these going forward. So if you'd like to check that out, twitch.tv slash the that engine is bell. unfortunate. We are you going to try and upgrade a couple of things on the car here. Uh, before we get into the upgrades, though, Monaco was not the, the best of races for us. Chances. It was a very boring race. I did my absolute best to try and get through it, uh, but we took almost an hour. We took the entirety of our practice session just figuring out a setup to try and get the car around in some fashion. The AI are very, very good around Monaco this year. They did a couple of things to the actual track that it just it feels different compared to 2020 and it doesn't it doesn't feel very good at all so it took us a long time to try and get the car where we felt comfortable to actually race it and we ended up coming in 19th we didn't really make any overtakes we did our best to try and stay out of traffic with the sim damage monaco is very very unforgiving and as we come to azerbaijan we know that it's another street circuit with not a lot of runoff room so we're gonna have to do our best to keep the car on track as well Getting into the upgrades, we did a little bit more trying to get a little bit more downforce, a little bit more drag reduction, and we actually have the chance to upgrade one of our facilities. We need to try and get things going a little bit more as we still sit in that third last spot ahead of Alfa Romeo and Williams. The Haas car actually is very, very quick. I think that Nikita and Mick driving it, though, have been a little bit of a hindrance to them. We seem to find our pace when we race against those two. And, and when we get things going, they don't really stand too much of a chance against us. Uh, but without further ado, let us get into our qualifying here at Azerbaijan for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. So as we come to qualifying, the car actually felt really good. We didn't set the most competitive of lap times. We got through the practice programs pretty quickly in the one session, uh, but the car did feel really, really good. It didn't feel like it was sliding all over the place. We felt like we had really good traction in the corners, and it, it felt better. It felt way better than it did at Monaco. I'm not sure if that was just the upgrades that we have or the previous setup that we've had on the couple of online races that I've done. As we pick up midway through, our actual outlap. Okay, there's two minutes left in this session and we're in the drop zone. We need a quick lap or well, that's qualifying. This, this ends up us. being halfway through the second outlap that we do and we get caught behind Alonso and we end up getting passed into one of the last corners by Raikkonen and I'm thinking maybe Jackson can use a little bit of a toe here and we end up basically kind of screwing ourselves heading down to the main straight we take no speed we should already be into eighth gear coming out of the last two corners here and we go way too slow we still end up getting a little bit of a toe from Raikkonen but the entirety of the lap it was it was very very messy I'm gonna go quiet here and just let you guys enjoy the lap we'll kind of pick up a little bit later once we get a little bit closer to the end for now enjoy So as we come around the last few corners, we can see we're up almost a half of a second here and Raikkonen has slowly kind of taken away from us, but we have done a fantastic job 
at giving the second Alfa Romeo of Antonio Giovinazzi a wicked toe down the main street here. I did not want that to happen. I wanted to try my best to just catch a toe from somebody and inevitably we end up giving a toe to Giovinazzi. And as we cross the line, we find out that we did not make it into Q2. We end up getting knocked out in Q1. We sit 20th on the grid. Again, the car felt good. The track at Azerbaijan, they've changed it a little bit. Into the castle section, they made it a little bit more open. The rest of the track still feels pretty much the same as it did last year. Still feeling pretty good. Without further ado, let's get ourselves into this race and see what we can come up with from P20 on the grid. Good afternoon and welcome to Baku. This was the arena, if you think back to 2017, of one of the most eventful races of modern history, with controversy behind the safety car, last second overtakes, and a historic podium for Williams and for Lance Stroll. So let's find out what lies in store for us this year. It's time for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Baku City Circuit then, an unpredictable 3.7 mile track around the streets of the Azerbaijan capital. 20 turns for our drivers to navigate today, including the infamous Turn 8, one of the tightest and most challenging corners of the season. Anthony Davidson joins me once again in the commentary box. and it's fantastic to have you with us here today, but I'm curious, as a man with experience out on the track, how do you stop those pre-race nerves from becoming overwhelming when you're lining up on the grid? But from the moment qualifying's over, you start to feel the adrenaline in your body build up and the buzz in your stomach as you anticipate the rundown into turn one. It's all a bit like going into battle, and the unknown situation makes you nervous. Those pre-race nerves are a good thing. The day you don't have them means that you don't care anymore. And of course, you have to make sure that all the procedures are second nature to you so that they're not taking up too much of your capacity. With the race minutes away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position, and P2 goes to Daniel Ricciardo, a strong showing from the Australian. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Bottas, Norris, Charles Leclerc and Sainz, Verstappen, Gasly, Vettel and Yuki Tsunoda, Stroll, Fernando Alonso, Esteban Ocon, and Mick Schumacher, Giovinazzi, Russell, Sergio Perez, and Jackson, Latifi, Schwartzman, Raikkonen. They'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. And Nikita Mazepin. And with preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. So not a bad place for us to be starting. Perez ends up taking a grip pedally along with Kemi Raikkonen. So we end up sitting a one, I think, grid spot a little bit further ahead. Not too much of a help, but having that Red Bull there is definitely going to make things a little bit interesting for us. I changed the lapping so that we're actually going to be doing a longer race. And I thought to myself, why not just go for an ultra-aggressive strategy? We have nothing to lose at this point. We need to try and do our best to try and maybe catch an overtake, maybe get one or two safety cars, uh, and we can pit for some softer tires try our best to absolutely get as far ahead of the pack as we can because racing in clean air is huge this year as we go to five red lights for the start of the azerbaijan grand prix in 2021 and the lights are out and it's an okay start from us but as we get through the gears it's wheel spin central for us trying to keep things nice 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 neat and tidy be aware that we will start to see a loss of power. As we already hear Jeff on the radio telling us that we're going to have some kind of a loss of power. And hopefully it doesn't hinder us a little bit too much as we dive down the inside. And try to get a power down as soon as we can. The tire's not feeling very great at the start here as we try and drag race Alonso into the third corner. We're going to try our best to outbreak him. Get inside of the Alpine driver and try and settle ourselves into this race moving forward. The first lap was definitely very interesting with Stroll and Ocon fighting each other through the entirety of the lap. And I think someone ended up actually getting a little bit of damage. As we pull up behind Gasly, who kind of basically trains us through the rest of the lap here, no one can find any amount of space to try and get past him. And we definitely think that he's got some kind of damage because after we get through the castle section, he is very, very slow as we almost run into the back of Lance Stroll and end up going into neutral, downshifting way too much. This castle section, that corner there, they definitely changed it so that it ends up being the same way that it has been in the actual race itself it's it's more open now so it's a little bit easier to kind of tuck yourself into the castle section not worry about having to just dart the car in as we pick up 
the end of lap one, trying to give ourselves a good run onto the straight. And we can see that Gasly's already been passed by Ocon. He's going very, very slow. And we're going to try and do our best to get inside. And we get brake checked by Gasly, who loses himself. And we tap the wall, and I think we end up getting a little bit of damage as well. As Jeff gives us another strategy to come in and pit now, we overtake Gasly heading into the pit lane, and we take ourselves into the pits for a fresh set of tires. And I think we're going to take a wing here as well. Very unfortunate that we get brake check there, and then we don't get any amount of grip coming out of the corner, and we tap it, basically lose an end plate, and have to take another set of tires and a wing very early on in the race. This aggressive strategy so far isn't paying off for young Aiden Jackson as we see Latifi pitting as well. A little bit of a tall order to try and catch Mazepin, but You'll be racing as you we know that we're still going to be quick on these medium we'll tires. One more stop today. So we're going to do our one best to try and catch him within the next few laps. He's 20 seconds ahead of us. Let's see what we can do. On now to lap number five. And as we come to the last couple corners here, turn three, heading into turn four, we end up getting a safety car. And we see that Sebastian Vettel is actually out of this session. Before we get into that though, we end up finding a little bit of racing going on behind us before the safety cars. We see Mick Schumacher, Antonio Giovinazzi and Pierre Gasly going three wide into corner number three. Don't know how they kept it safe in there. And as soon as they start to get to turn number four, that's when the safety car hits. As we pick up now with Sebastian Vettel to see exactly what happens, a little bit of contact between himself and Leclerc, heading right into the castle section, and he just misjudges it. Seb pulls a Leclerc and just misjudges the corner completely. pick up ourselves now at the safety car restart and we continuously got brake checked it seemed like every time we would start to get going we get brake checked okay, and then we clear. go and then we get brake checked a taking a little look on the outside on the for Sergio Perez and we think the better of it just tuck ourselves in thinking now at this point you know if we can use Goldman, Perez as a little bit of a toe here we may be able to create a little bit of space as we get another yellow flag Heading yeah, into turn in three, and Yuki Sonoda is actually out of this race. Let's check and see what right happened here. This is on the safety car restart. Everybody seems to be trying to do everything nice, neat, and tidy. Everybody single file through the first corner, yeah, heading into in turn two. Track, in and Sonoda's just missed it. Clear it up in time and, there are no and he almost ends up having right Fernando Alonso get collected along the way. As we take another look from behind the car, he just misjudges it and runs right into the back of Antonio Giovinazzi. And that's Yuki Sonoda's race done and dusted for the day. Two, two incidents within the first eight laps. It's been a very eventful Azerbaijan for us, for sure. I'm curious if we're gonna get any more safety cars with the way that things are going here. As we come on to lap number nine, and we've been doing a decent job keeping up with Perez as he and Lance Stroll collide heading into the corner we're thinking to ourselves that maybe we can try and catch some kind of a good exit here and maybe get one of these two. Perez gets a fantastic exit. Stroll does not. We have a lot of ERS to use after that safety car restart. So we're going to use a lot of that ERS, try and use some DRS if we end up getting it. We don't end up getting the DRS as it's still only a lap after. We go to make the dive down the outside of Lance Stroll. And we're going to try and break as late as we can. Try our best to give him all the space in the world on the inside and stay wide. And we get the job done on Lance Stroll. Thinking again, if we can just create a little bit of space and use some of these faster guys to almost tow us alone, there's a chance that we may be able to end up getting into the points here. Knowing that our tires are only a few laps old, slowly trying to heat them up to keep them in the right operating temperature, to keep them fast. We know that a few of the other guys have started on the medium tires. Their tires are already gonna be 10 laps old. Ours are gonna be nine, so that's still one lap fresher. We're gonna try and do our best to try and push as far as we can here, right? We're already up into P9 from 19 on the grid, 10 spots within the first 10 laps. A lot of guys had to pit under safety car. A lot of them ended up getting out of the race and having issues coming into corners with other drivers. It's been a very, very eventful 
Azerbaijan Grand Prix for us, and we're gonna do our best to keep going. On now to lap number 11, and we find ourselves behind a very, very slow Esteban Ocon. I'm not sure if he's got some kind of damage. I believe we asked Jeff about the driver in front of us to see if he has any amount of information for us as he was running up in the top five and he's just slipped his way down the order now behind Leclerc and Sainz. As we're thinking, maybe we can attack the Alpine car, which has been very, very fast this year. We've always had issues with Alonso and Ocon. It just doesn't seem like he has any amount of pace. We were more than a couple of seconds behind the Ferraris and now all of a sudden we have this Alpine in front of us to try and maybe pick off and see what we can end up coming up with. As we follow Ocon through the castle session again, it seems like he's very slow coming around corners and out of corner exits as well. Thinking maybe we can try and get a little bit of a slipstream coming into the back of section three here maybe end up catching DRS if we're lucky. And again, very, very slow into the corners and not as fast as I normally see the AI out of corners. Definitely gonna try and take a look. Coming down the back stretch of Esteban Ocon. Young Frenchman having a good year so far in our My Team career mode. A lot of the drivers are having good years. It seems like the McLarens have been really fast this year. For whatever reason, Valtteri Bottas has been absolutely phenomenal every single race he seems to always put the car on pole as we make short work of lock on We're doing our best to try and keep our line mediums. heading into turn one and then into turn two and we see that hamilton in the pits coming out has already got himself the fastest lap head to lap 13 now hamilton right on our tail and we're not going to do anything about it we know he's in the faster car we know he's going to lap us no matter what we're going to do our best to give him the space just let him get by Maybe see if he would take a page out of this book like he would, didn't do in Silverstone. Hint, hint, wink, wink, nudge, nudge sort of thing. We Again, think maybe if we can catch some kind of a slipstream with him, it's it's going to help us. Create a little bit more space between whoever ends up behind us. He steps away from us. And as we head to lap 14, we're supposed to bounce. We asked Jeff about him behind us. We asked him about Alonzo. And Alonzo's laps are a little bit slower than ours. So we think the better of it. We think maybe we can go one more lap. A little bit fresher tires for the end of the race. Try our best to keep ahead of Alonzo. Maybe he boxes with us. We have that four second buffer between him. And maybe we can help create a little bit more of a space between the two cars. Okay, we can take you this lap. As we check our tires out, our tires are pretty much wasted. Our ICE is not looking any better either. I'm getting to be a little bit worried about it as we did have that issue at the beginning of the race that Jeff said I'm I'm not not too confident that the car isn't going to blow up on us again. We had issues actually in Monaco where they said the car was having problems. There was something that they were looking at and nothing ended up coming from it. We ended up getting the R&D points from it, which is a new feature this year. I think that's really cool. Complete that if we end up out. having an issue with the car Pitch and nothing comes from it, the team finds something out about what happened, what went wrong, and they end up giving us a little bit of R&D points. So that's a nice little feature that they've added. Come out of the pits, we're behind Sergio Perez and in front of Mazepin and Schumacher, who have always been rapid. And we quickly catch up to Sergio Perez, but we think the better of it of the dive and we think maybe there's a chance that we can use Perez as a tow again. But I found that trying to chase after somebody and use them as a tow being two completely different things, it, it you lose so much downforce. The dirty air is very, very apparent here. It was very apparent in our actual lap for qualifying with Kimi Raikkonen and we lost it. But coming onto the back stretch, we get a fantastic run on Sergio Perez heading into turn one doing all we can to use him as a tow, potentially pass him and leave the two hosses behind us. Don't want to deal with those two. They've been very, very aggressive this year for as well as they've been driving. Are we going to go for the pass on Sergio Perez? We give him the dummy to try and go up the inside and we take our line around the outside. We have the position back. There's no need to give him any space heading into turn one. And that's move done for us. Nice move. After finishing the move on Sergio Perez, we notice Russell and Schwartzman up ahead on the hard tires as well, hoping that maybe we could be able to catch 
a little bit of DRS from the two of them. As we come through three and head into four, we're rapidly, rapidly gaming on them. It seems like Schwartzman's definitely holding up Russell in some way, shape, or form. So we're going to do everything that we can to try and catch these two, right? As we close down almost a whole second in the first few corners of Sector 1, heading into Sector 2, knowing that it's going to be a slower corner, we're going to do our best to catch up to them. We have to try and catch these two if we're going to try and have any sniff of any amount of points today. As we slowly limp our way through the castle section, we've gained almost two seconds on the two of them. Now I know we'll be able to catch them here, try and do our absolute best to save as much ERS as we can to use it for the final straight. I know we're going to get DRS here because we continuously break late trying to catch Russell. We've now taken almost two and a half seconds out of his time. Do our best to baby, our corner, baby the car through the corner, get a fantastic exit, and let ourselves get a tow from Russell and Schwarzman to potentially make a move on one of them, hopefully Russell, into the first corner. As we deploy ERS, we get our DRS in a sec here. As we're coming up aside, we can see the red lines of Russell getting close to us as we slowly move our way over and we end up getting both of the cars heading into one. We try to do our best to give our teammates space. We have to break really, really late. And that's two moves done in one, heading on to lap number 18. We are up in the points. Hopefully our teammate can try and fight back against Russell who just ended up getting DRS. Up next is going to be Carlos Sainz. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to catch him. He is five seconds ahead, but he is on the hard tires, and the hard tires have seemed to be very, very slow this year. The tire wear on them is obviously a little bit better, but the trade-off is definitely not worth it. As we head on to lap number 19, and we've taken actually a few seconds out of Sainz, which has been pretty surprising because he had five on us. It was only a lap and a bit later. Where again, we're closing down rapidly on the Ferrari, the same way that we did on Schwartzman and Russell, trying to keep it as clean as we can through every sector of this racetrack, to try and do what we can to potentially catch another set of DRS, ERS slipstream, heading down the final session as Kimi Raikkonen, our rival in this My Team career mode, is out of the session. Take a look at the replay, and we don't see anything immediately that as he comes around the corner, a huge puff of smoke out of the back of Kimi Raikkonen's car. It goes away with the camera angle, but we can see as Esteban Ocon overtakes him, that is Kimi Raikkonen's day out. And he is done from this race, which definitely helps us because we are falling behind in the rival standings between Kimi, always out qualifying us and definitely always pacing himself better in races. As we come around to the end of lap 19 now, finishing up Carlos Sainz, thinking again. We always continuously think that maybe we can catch a toe with somebody. So I use the DRS for a little bit, but once again, we think the better of it. He's on hard tires. He's still going to be able to tow us around. We're going to continuously try to follow him because it's going to pull us away. We saw Alonzo, Alonzo pit for soft tires, so he's going to be rapid in the end of this race here. We don't need to pass signs. We just need to let signs tow us around, you know, follow in his strip screen a little bit. Don't need to use the DRS, just need to keep him in sight. And then maybe on the last lap or two, we try and make ourselves a move, we try and get ahead of the Ferrari and potentially beat one of the Ferraris on the grid. I think with players up somewhere in P4 or five. So doing our best here to try and stick with signs through lap 20 moving forward we only have five laps to go six laps to go in the grand prix the car has been feeling fantastic the track's been feeling really good it seems like you can cut the corner there heading into the castle section a little bit more than you could in previous games and as well being able to kind of cut that corner there's no tires there anymore it's a clean drive up into the castle section you can dart the car in you didn't have to be as light on the or as heavy on the brakes as you did in previous years it was it's it's a nicer it's a nicer entry it does feel rough heading into that corner it's that one ends up being a little bit tighter i believe it was tighter this year in the actual race as we're still close again on signs and we're thinking about actually going for the move here right we need to try and get past them stroll is on soft tires if we can get past signs we maybe have a shot at trying to get some kind of a top five just yet but uh, we've seen a problem at our end we're looking into it as Jeff gives us the bad 
news yet again. Two races in a row that the car has had an issue. We still don't know what it is. We look, I look on the MFD and there's nothing. It shows the it's wear on the car, right. but it See doesn't actually tell issues. us we have issues. The car didn't feel very slow. I mean, we made short work of signs and he's already falling behind us. We didn't have any other issues going forward in the race. It was it was weird. It seems like they, they get this and then it's another roll of the dice for RNG to see if there actually ends up being an issue itself. Heading on to the end of lap 21 and we get another safety car. We've had two safety cars in this race. And I, I just don't know. We've had a safety car in every single race we've had so far. As Stroll makes a huge dive around the outside of our teammate Robert Schwartzman. He basically puts him into the wall. Not the cleanest of racing from our friend Lance Stroll. We finish up the safety car restart on lap 25. So we only have two laps to go here. We didn't get the best of starts heading out of it. We fell a little bit behind. First corner was okay. We almost crashed into Leclerc, and we now have a Sergio Perez on hard tires behind us, hoping that we can just keep him at bay for the next few laps and that our softs can pick up a little bit more heat. They're sliding all over the place for us as we finally head into the last lap again. Sergio pressuring us the entire way here, trying my best to not make a mistake. Aiden Jackson doing all he can to hang on to a potential top six, knowing that Sergio Perez isn't going to get any DRS because it isn't three laps after the safety car. So we're going to have to rely on some very, very careful overtake deployment as we try and keep in front of the Red Bull and keep him at bay for the next lap as clean as we can through the last few corners. And Perez is gaining at a rapid pace. We're going to have to be careful for the next few corners. As soon as we can get out, power down as clean as we can as much ERS as we can we have no more laps we might as well deploy as much as we can hopefully we don't run out of deploy and as we come around the last few corners we see Perez's time just climbing I think he misjudged one of the corners or it's very very apparent that trying to follow behind somebody right, race over. is a lot harder than I think in. we than I think it is as we come home for P6 of the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. I thought it was a fantastic race for us. We ended up getting driver of the day, and so which was no surprise for starting 19th on the grid. Race and a well victory. So Anthony, what made the difference out there today? We cut to McLaren and Danny Rick the race, didn't it? it's hard has to pulled the win. I definitely no think the safety car had something to do with it. I'm not exactly position. too sure what happened for him to pass Hamilton and Valtteri. But Danny Rick gets his shoey in Azerbaijan. Congratulations to everyone it was a fantastic team, race for McLaren. I think Lando placed in P4, P5, so McLaren had a track. lot of points this race. So let's review the driver standings. It wasn't the best weekend for our championship leader and their advantage Daniel the from Hamilton, Valtteri and Lando. Anthony Fantastic Davidson. race from those three. I have to give it to Charles does they pretty well himself. Sergio Perez was right pace. behind us for the majority of this race. He was either right in front of us or right behind us. It seemed like he started very, very deep. I think he had Mercedes one or two grid penalties. There was also a strong as our teammate ends up placing P14 from P20 on the grid. Still a solid race from Robert. He's been doing really good giving us hard points for every single practice path that we have. Red Bull falling behind McLaren in the standings. I'm I'm actually kind of shocked about that. So that Seems like Sergio Perez every single time has race. some kind of an issue. As we go to You're the pit to talk to Claire. What's your secret? I definitely think there's no secret, Claire. Not it's always about having a great team and a great car. What do you think went wrong? These questions are always tricky. I need to figure out which one doesn't affect his focus because apparently they notice it and it affects their focus going forward. And we don't have any content. We don't have. We don't ever have any comment Appreciate about the collisions. I need to upgrade my ability to answer some different media questions. The nice question, or the nice answer for the question, is always that it's the hardest racing out there, and sometimes these things happen. That's gonna do it for us today, though, for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Join us next time. 
for the Canadian Grand Prix. It could be our home Grand Prix, our home driver Grand Prix, or I guess our team owner Grand Prix. As always, like, comment, and subscribe, and leave any amount of tips, tricks that you have for making these videos better. Thank you so much. I'm the Leaky Valve. I appreciate your time. Stay safe out there. Cheers.